What's up everyone, this is Mike from Tech Everything Out bringing you a long-term review of the Google Pixel 2. Although it's been more than 6 months since this phone came out in October 2017, I still think it's a great choice as long as you don't pay full price for it. In this video, I'll tell you why I think that, based on my past 6 months using this phone as my daily driver. So without further ado, let's jump right into the review. Starting with the camera, which was the main selling point of the Pixel 2 back when it was first released, I think it's held up pretty well for the most part, but falls short in other areas. It's still got one of the highest DxO mark ratings, although I'm not really going to talk much about that, since this review is based on real usage. Personally, I think the Pixel 2 has the best camera for a point and shoot crowd due to its simple app, excellent processing, and what I think is the best HDR on the market right now. So when it comes to photography, the Pixel 2 really produces some amazing results even though it doesn't offer the user the ability to fine tune everything. So like I said before, the Pixel 2 has great image processing if not the best on the market and you can thank machine learning for that as it helps the Pixel 2's image processing capabilities improve as time goes on even as the hardware gets older. As you can see in these samples here, well lit photos are phenomenal and despite having a fixed aperture, the software makes it a solid performer in low light conditions as well. This is all thanks to what Google calls HDR+, which doesn't just take a bunch of pictures of different exposures and mashes them together, instead analyzing each exposure, finding the best parts, and combining those to produce optimal results. And of course, this is all based on machine learning, so it only gets better over time. So there are actually two HDR Plus modes, which are regular, for scenes with a lot of contrast, and enhanced, which is designed specifically for low light. Comparing each mode in this low light scene, with a few bright lights here and there, you can see how HDR Plus Enhanced ramps up the exposure a lot more than the regular HDR mode, making a lot more of this scene's background visible in the photo. However, this doesn't come without its shortcomings, as these low light photos are somewhat grainy and HDR enhanced seems to have overexposed the school sign, which was untouched by regular HDR. The one area in which the Pixel 2's camera can keep up with its new competition like the S9 Plus and the P20 Pro is its hardware. The lack of a dedicated telephoto lens means that you shouldn't zoom unless you want your photos to lose quality. Meanwhile, the software-based portrait mode works pretty well on human subjects so it could be better, but it sucks when you try to use it on non-human subjects. Since it's based on machine learning, it was most likely trained using human subjects. Despite following a bit shorter photography, the Pixel 2 excels in recording video. This is all thanks to its electronically assisted OIS, which makes handheld video look like it's been shot with a gimbal. Aside from a few artifacts of electronic assistance, this is probably the smoothest handheld video you'll ever get out of any smartphone to date. In this extreme but unscientific test, you can really see how the Pixel 2 manages to keep the shot steady, even though this bus bounced around all over the place whenever it hit a bump of the road. Also, if you hadn't already noticed, the Pixel 2's amazing image processing also comes into play during video. Moving on to performance, the Snapdragon 835 powered Pixel 2 might not be able to keep up with its new Snapdragon 845 powered competition, but from my own experience, the difference in performance is only marginal, making the Pixel 2 a solid choice if you want a performer but don't really need peak performance. As you can see here just going through the UI and launching apps, this older phone is still pretty smooth and pretty fast, and for someone like me who doesn't really game on their phone or throw anything demanding at it, it's really more than enough. I do have two things to complain about in regards to performance though. First is the fact that the phone only comes with 4GB of RAM. 
Now, 4 gigs is enough RAM, but I think Google really should have put more RAM in the phone, as I do get a fair bit of reloading while switching between apps. This reloading can get really annoying for me sometimes, like when Facebook reloads, it makes me miss the post I wanted to see. My second complaint is battery life, because this phone only comes with a 3000 mAh battery. Now this size would be great for lower end hardware, but for something of this caliber, I think it's just a bit too small. So with conservative usage, such as keeping your screen brightness low, sticking to Wi-Fi, and not watching videos, streaming music, or gaming, can easily leave you with anywhere between 20 to 40% at the end of the day. But I'm a pretty heavy user who relies on mobile data, watches a lot of videos, and often turns up the brightness to Snapchat or take photos, in addition to using the phone as a music player. So even though I don't even game on my phone, what I consider a typical day of usage only leaves me with about 5-10% to of battery at the end of the day. And that I find sort of unacceptable from a modern smartphone. If you're wondering about screen on time, that's usually somewhere between 5 and 8 hours. Speaking of the screen, the Pixel 2's 5-inch 1080p AMOLED panel has held up pretty well for me, with only minimal burn-in at the bottom and top of the display from the nav bar and the status bar, since I usually keep it on the lowest brightness. However, your mileage may vary with this. That being said, I think the Pixel 2's display is still almost the best OLED panel on the market due to its natural reproduction of color and lack of any blue shift. However, I think the 1080p resolution is a bit low and makes the phone feel a bit more dated than it actually is. When it comes to audio, Pixel 2 is both a hit and a miss. Its front-firing stereo speakers are probably the best on the market, being able to get really loud with minimal amounts of distortion. I don't think words could describe how good they really are, so here's a sample for y'all to hear and decide how good it really is for yourself. So where does the Pixel 2 fall short in the audio department? Well, if you haven't guessed already, it's obviously the lack of a headphone jack. So it should be common knowledge that most good headphones on the market still use a 3.5mm jack, while the number of Bluetooth options that are actually good is really limited, and even though it's been two years since Motorola first removed the headphone jack from Android phones, replacing it with the USB-C port there's still only a handful of USB-C headphones out there. Now, there are some pretty good options when it comes to those, like the Razer Hammerheads, but unfortunately, they aren't really good enough for my taste, so it's become a really big issue for me. I'm mean, sure there's also an included adapter in the box you can use with any headphones, but it really limits what you can do with the phone since it blocks the USB-C port when it's in use and I can only describe its digital analog conversion as lackluster. Because of that, I had to spend an extra 170 US dollars on a pair of Bluetooth headphones that are actually good, and in my books, it isn't okay if a phone makes you spend extra money just to have a good experience. The Pixel 2 only has two options for storage. It's either 64 gigs or 128 gigs, and there's no micro SD expansion available. Furthermore, if you buy the blue version like I have, Google has decided to limit you to 64 gigs for whatever reason. There's just no 128 gig option available for the blue phone. Now, personally, 64 gigs is actually more than enough for my needs. Since I have owned a couple of 64 gig phones in the past, and never was I ever able to fill them up completely. But of course, if you need a lot of storage, then the Pixel 2 isn't really the phone for you. So I think it would have been a lot nicer if Google added a 256 gig storage capacity or the ability to use micro SD expansion. But since this is Google, they at least should have included some free Google Drive space with the phone.
When it comes to the durability of the Pixel 2, I couldn't really speak for mine because it hasn't really seen a lot in these 6 months I've had it. It's always been in a good case with a good screen protector, hasn't really been sad on or stressed too much, has never seen water, and hasn't fallen for more than one foot. However, I do have some questions to ask about the glass panel on the back, which doesn't appear to be Gorilla Glass 5 as Google states on their website. That's because mine has a scratch on it, in the shape of my case's camera cutout, and it is a scratch alright. It might be invisible, but it certainly is tangible, as I could feel it when running my fingernail over it. I don't think this scratch would have happened to Gorilla Glass 5 through normal usage. The Pixel 2's design is probably the one thing that hasn't held up too well over the last 6 months. The more square body of the Pixel 2 contrasts quite a bit for the more streamlined and rounded designs of its competition, while it straight up looks old when you view it from the front, because it just has a 16x9 display flanked by super thick bezels on the top and bottom. Now I understand this may have been done to allow the Pixel 2 to achieve its $650 price point, but in a time when displays are moving up at taller ratios and bezels are rapidly shrinking, the Pixel 2 really looks older than it actually is. And I say this because I've had a lot of people call my phone a Nexus even though it isn't. Because if you look at the overall design of the phone, it really does look a lot like a Nexus phone from 2015. Combining elements from the 5X, the 6P, as well as the original Pixel. Now to be honest, I actually kind of like this little design throwback, but it just fails to reflect how this is a modern device and makes it look a bit odd when compared to other phones in the market. As for software, there isn't really much for me to say about it. It's a clean build of Android, basically stock Android with a few key enhancements added for the Pixel. I'm not really a big fan of how Oreo has a lot of white in its interface though, so I can only hope that the next version of Android will bring a dark mode with it. What I absolutely hate about this software though is that apps seem to remove themselves from the system overview when they remain in touch for a long period of time. Now those apps might still be in the background, but it's pretty annoying to have to go back to the app store to launch them again. It'd be so much better if they stayed in the overview like they did in the past versions of Android. In the end, the Pixel 2 is still a fairly solid choice despite its age. With its great display, excellent speakers, solid camera, and clean software, but not for its $650 price tag. For a bit more than $50 less, you could get a much better option, the Huawei P20, which offers better specs, a more modern design, and a much better camera. However, if you're able to get the Pixel 2 for a good price, it should be a no-brainer that you should definitely jump for. Anyways, like this video if you enjoyed it, dislike it if you hated it, leave your thoughts or any suggestions down in the comments below, and I will catch you in the next one.